Um, were you surprised at the turnout? For the May 1st event? No. I, I think that because there was such an organized, concerted effort um, that, that we expected there would be a tremendous turnout and we were very excited and pleased that it, it did happen that way. What was the Korean community hoping would be illuminated by this kind of public activity? Well, what, what are the particular issues that your community might be concerned about? I mean, we're definitely concerned about the immigration backlog, that people have to wait so many years to be joined by their children or by their siblings or their parents, that also there are unnecessary deportations that separate families. We're very concerned about that. We're also, um, a lot of people don't know, but actually one in five people in our community is undocumented. And so there are a number of people that uh, would benefit by a path to citizenship. Um, and then there are also students who would benefit from the DREAM Act in our community as well that we've been working with since it was first introduced in 2003. Uh, we also want to make sure that worker rights are, remain protected uh, for everybody, regardless of their status in this country, and that basic civil rights and liberties um, are maintained, including due process and the right to a day in court. And so all these things affect all members of our community, regardless of their status, and, and that's why people felt it was important to come out. I'm hearing a very rich use of what I see as human rights language, mm -hmm. as opposed to traditional social justice language, if you, if you understand the distinction I'm making. And that's why I've, I've been looking at the May Day thing as a human rights march, or a parade, uh, rather, because um, it seems to me that brings a little different cast to the kind of issues that affect your community. Having said that, why do you think there's such opposition to, to extending human rights to undocumented workers well, I that led to this legislation that you think was a big impetus for this turnout? But is, you know, the counterpoint to the counter the, the counterpoint to to the way the media covered this activity. I think it's just the fact that um, a lot of people just cross without papers and cross undocumented. I mean, you know, without going through the legal process. But on the other side of that, um, a lot of our Congress people don't understand that there's a backlog and there's a large human need and they have to go to Mexico and, you know, to little towns in Mexico to see exactly how poor people are that lead them to actually cross the border, leaving their entire family behind and coming here without even knowing where they're going to live, where they're going to work and just the need for to survive. So I think that they're not seeing the human aspect of it, and they're just seeing the fact that they're crossing illegally, quote unquote. And so um, I, I, I think that that's why there's such such a hatred, you know, against you know people that cross the border undocumented without mm -hmm. papers. Do you think that there is any effective way to counter folks that want to put fences up on borders and keep any more undocumented workers from coming in the country? I mean, how do, you, how do you discuss these issues within your community? How do you respond to that, to, to the other side? I mean, I think that, just in my opinion alone, I mean, there is a backlog in immigration visas. The process to get a visa is, is long. It's, it's long. There are different categories of visas for different people. I mean, I think that if you're um, Mexican, the, the wait is longer. If you're Korean, it's longer. I mean, I don't know, you know, what the, exactly the wait is, but the, the, the fact is, the fact of the matter is that there is a huge backlog in all nationalities and all countries. And so I think alleviating all that, and then there's always cases of people, I mean, you know, p um, some people that are applying say well they've lost my documents they lost my birth certificate or they lost this and they, they they didn't get the fingerprints and the process is so it's just it's a joke it's you know it's not effective and it's not quick and maybe if they figured out how to do that effectively efficiently maybe there wouldn't be such a backlog and maybe there wouldn't be so much of an entry illegal entry as they call it is this what your community is experiencing as well Yes, I, mean, I think one thing also that's effective is having brave community members who are willing to tell their stories so that, so for example, we have one volunteer with our center who is an undocumented student. She's about to graduate from college and her whole family had to work very hard to put her through college because she is undocumented. Um, she's about to graduate but then she won't be able to work and so all these skills that she's gotten through her education, which she worked very hard to attain, you know, great grades, participate in extracurricular activities, will not benefit the nation if she's not able to work. So she's been out there speaking out about that, you know, that there are 
working people in our community who work hard at their jobs to put food on the table for their families that um, but then have to live in the shadows because they don't have status and having them come out and tell their stories has had a huge impact. Yeah, and I don't think that there's a lot of people, there's a lot of our, you know, elected officials that don't realize that, you know, there are people here that have gone through school, have a college education, but can't work. And they sound just as American as I am, you know, because I was born here and, you know, I mean, so it, we're very much American. It's just that, you know, they just don't have legal status. So, I, I, you know, it's, it's kind of ironic that, you know, there's, if there's a way to do it, I think that we need to really, sh you know, show them that there's another face. And there are people here ready to be productive, you know, citizens. On the stage, May Day, Cardinal George said, you know, this isn't really about rights, it's about respect. He said this in both Spanish and English. Was that the real impact of the May Day parade, as I call it? Was a show of force to, to gain respect? with maybe some of these other legal issues to be resolved later? I mean, in my opinion, I think it's both. I think it is respect and it is rights. I mean, one, it's respect because we're tired, you know, as you know, as workers and as, as people coming into this country, we're tired of, you know, actually being, you know, being a, a productive part of the economy and, and helping out and actually, you know, as you know, buying products, buying American products and paying taxes and everything. And, and, and then we're also, you know, at the same time, it's frustrating to see that we're just, you know, completely disrespected. You know, people don't realize the economic impact, and that was one of the messages: is the economic impact that um, that you know immigrants have here. So um, I think that it was definitely about respect, but then it was also in the larger scheme of things. I mean, we do want to have rights in the United States. I mean, we're tired of being here, um, you know, in the shadows, and we need to be, you know, recognized. And you know, I mean, we need to, we need, we definitely need to be recognized. So that's definitely, I think it's both. So what do you think is going to happen next? I mean, I maintain that we've had